specialist. Today I want to talk to you about the impact of parental alienation on the alienating parent and this is quite controversial because why are we talking about them? They're doing all of this but if we don't talk about it, we don't understand why and what that means then we're not going to change anything so let's talk about it. So for me the key difference between someone who is it annoyed and just decides, oh, you know what, you're not seeing them. That's just happened. They may have just been really badly hurt. They don't want to see them, so they cut off the friends, cut off the kids. It's not ideal, but it's not parental alienation because it will be resolved, and that is high conflict. Parental alienation starts way before the end of a relationship. In fact, quite often the seed is planted right at the as soon as they met you or even before they've met you but, and I'm going to break it down into five key stages and the impact that this is having on their mentality and everything so the first stage is the attachment so they've met you or they've they've seen you and they've decided you're the one that's gonna meet all their needs boost them um, you may be successful, you may be good looking, you may be rich, you may be vulnerable. Whatever it is that they need in someone, they've identified that you can do that. And so they come into your life and things move pretty quickly. They want to meet everyone, they want to get married, they want to move in, they want to get pregnant. And this is stage one. It's a very insecure attachment and it is built on fear and that is not healthy and that will become evident throughout the rest of the relationship. So you, they're pregnant now and this is where they start to um, exert some more control. So this is stage two which is all about the control. Um, they will they will take your treating them kindly because they're pregnant, they're carrying your child. They'll take that as meaning you care more about them. So it's positive reinforcement that they've made the right decision because you're behaving in a nice way towards them. You're being caring towards this unborn child. You're more attentive than perhaps you were. All these things reinforce that they've made the right decision to do it. It also, psychologically, ties their identity to the unborn child. You love the child, therefore you love them. You won't leave the child, therefore you won't leave them. They, that's how their mindset is. Um, and you can start to see the underlying elements here of why parental alienation happens. So that's stage two. Stage three is the battle for control. Because at some point, and this could go on for years, there could be more than one child. Um, there will be battles within that and they will use the children. They will, everything that they get you to do will be on the grounds of it's for the kids or um, they will just use them to control your behaviour. There'll be veiled threats about, oh, if you ever leave, um, you will never see your kids and they will be belittling you in front of the children in very subtle ways, making the kids believe that they're the more competent parent, when in actual fact, you're probably the most competent parent, or the alienating, no, the alienated parent is actually the most competent, the most loving, the most giving, the most secure. Um, but this, this is what they're starting to do, they're, they're battling for that, that control to keep you, keep you um, under their control. Obviously, you can't live like that. No one can live like that. You put up with it for a certain amount of time. Maybe you still love them or you believe in them and want them, think they can get better or you just are staying for the sake of the kids. But eventually, your own needs are going to need to be met and they're not being met in that environment. And so 
you will make the decision to leave. Now, this could happen in lots of ways. It could be that you just get so down that actually the part your partner decides, you know what, they're not meeting my needs anymore, I'm discarding them, and you're kicked out. It could be you decide you want out and you may, you may lash out, you may cheat. Again, I'm not condoning this, I'm just saying that these are possibilities. Upon finding out, the relationship falls into tatters. The kids then obviously, you're being punished for that, so the kids will, that you will believe that it is in some way justifiable because you've done something. Um, and all, again, all of this positively reinforces for the alienating parent that they're doing the right thing, that it's acceptable. They can justify it because you did something wrong, so this is your punishment. And that's what they're bothered about. They're, all they're bothered about is you were unable to, you hurt them, so they're going to lash out and hurt you in the best way possible. And they may use the kids to lure you back in. They may use, um, they may gatekeep your access to them. Um, but it, at some point, obviously, there's going to be the rejection and it may be reject, and this is stage four. So it may be you reject them and decide, no, I'm not going back. I definitely am happier outside the relationship. I think the kids will be happier as well. And at that point, that's it. You are nothing to them at that point. Equally, they may decide that they're going to reject you. Unlikely, but they may. They may decide they've met someone else. Um, they don't want to put up with this. They're going to then play the victim, meet someone else, say how how unreasonable behaviour yours was, and they will meet someone else, and you're discarded, and that they will do everything to sever that relationship um, with the child because they've set it all up. Throughout the entire relationship, they've been telling people that you've got mental health problems, that you're angry, that you drink, that um, you're not capable. And again, this works for both, this men and women, Except, except for the getting pregnant bit, this could be either men or women that are doing this. And so when the relationship ends, when that rejection occurs, all of that comes into play. And professionals and other people, obviously because they've, they've laid the ground for it, they've said there are all these things, and then when the separation happens, they can go, oh, yeah, I just couldn't put up with them anymore, play the victim. And so it's very, very clever what they do. Um, and the final stage is punishment, which is they will do anything they can to punish you. They will get the kids to turn against you. They will turn everyone against you. They'll try and get you to lose your job, your home, to be financially ruined, um, reputation ruined, everything. They, they, they will not stop until you are ruined. And that is the mindset of the alienating parent. And all the way through, they're getting all this positive reinforcement that it works because people believe them and they don't believe you, so they'll keep doing that because it's working. This is why we need to tackle it, is because actually the system that we're working at the moment proves them right. And so we're, we're encouraging more people to do this because it works. And that's why I want to talk about it. That's why we're having these conversations is because if we don't, then we're just going to keep reinforcing to them. Like I say, they will just believe that they are absolutely vilified in what they're doing. So I hope you found that helpful. I would love to hear your experiences. Does it sound familiar? Are there any differences? Um, we do have our Facebook group now, which is www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash NAPARK, N-A-P-A-R-R-K. Keep curly curl. Um, or you can email me at inquiries at the nurturingcoach.co.uk. I would love to hear from you. As always, please like, comment, and share. Let's get this out there. Let's have these conversations with more people. Let's put this in front of the right people so that we can make changes. Okay, take care, everyone, and we'll speak soon. Bye bye.